Let's give away some t-shirts. Give away them shirts, Doug. All right. We had 19 reviews this last week. Oh, wow. wow. Hey, we're on our way up. There we go. So didn't, even, didn't even call for it, huh? Oh, no. Man. I did. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No. I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no. you to, did. To myself. Fine. <laughs> so we're, we're going to give away secret. five shirts. It's a secret. I was saying in the email. <laughs> <laughs> Law of attraction. Give those shirts away. All right. Uh, five uh, shirts going out, starting with Renfro Fitness. Mm. Bo, 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 bo. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> training. Mama BDW. And finally, Mama Big BDW? Sexy Bear. Uh, Big sexy is that bear. you, Justin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, you don't need any t-shirts, bro. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. How do they Give get the shirts? XLs. All I'm right. Gaining. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Boom. Big Sexy Bear out. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts. Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Boy, uh, if you're uh, if you're easily offended, <laughs> get ready. Yeah, put um, your seatbelt on. You might, mind pump might not be for you. You might not want to listen to this upcoming episode of Mind Pump. In the beginning, for about thirty minutes, we talk about political correctness and the fear to talk about certain topics, and I end up talking about certain topics. Mm. Uh, Adam apologizes. Sweat. Adam actually apologizes to someone that he offended on a previous episode. <laughs> believe it or not, yeah, it was amazing. We talk about Adam's mom. <laughs> and when do we not? We always talk, and we also talk about my outing with my ex-wife and her boyfriend. And lastly, Justin talks about his bearded dragon. What are we talking about when we say that? <laughs> You'll, have You'll have to have, listen. That's right. To uh, figure it out. Cool. Then we get into the questions. We discuss how to last longer in bed because, of course, we're experts on every single subject, including fitness. Yeah, we like to tackle stuff like that. We also talk about how you would compete, train, and eat if you were natural versus if you were on anabolic steroids. Does that even make a difference? Then we talk about, does it matter what time you eat? Uh, does nutrient timing really make a difference in your fitness and health goals? And lastly, we talk about how you should start a, pro, uh, a podcast like Mind Pump if you were so inclined. We give you guys advice. You want to do what we're doing? We tell you how in this upcoming Go episode of Mind Pump. Also, our summer starter pack is still available. It includes MAPS Anabolic, the Nutrition and Fasting Guide, MAPS Prime, and access to our forum. What we do is we took all those things and we discounted them by over 50% off. It's the perfect way to get started. Yeah. It's uh, ready, set, go. It's like turnkey, ready to go. Like, hey, let's let's do this. Uh, it's everything you need and the forum access. That way we can kind of help you along the way, along with our community. Now, you can find the Summer Starter Pack at mindpumpmedia.com. Yeah, yeah. Why don't, why don't, why don't you, you want me to go mine, you mine got, small? You have controversy. Mine's first. small. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. feel like yours is going to be bigger than mine. No, no, more. there's nothing. It's not big. It's just a, uh, it, was, it happened to me this weekend. What, okay. But tell no, me, what's, what funny. was the No, the episode that we released, I think it was what, 526 or whatever, where we're talking about like cult leaders and whatever. And I made, Oh, that's right. I saw and somebody... I made a, uh, uh, and I got some messages because I, I said some controversial shit. Like I said that, uh, how historically, you know, men have been, uh, oh, we've been yeah. leaders culturally, right? Like the tribe leader or the, you know, president or whatever. And how um, there's been studies done. And when men went today, like modern times, when men and women are questioned whether or not they'd rather work for a man or a, fem or a woman uh, in terms of their boss, that uh, men and women would prefer to work for a man. And actually, in fact, I, I read one article, let's see if I can find it, where actually more women than men actually said they prefer to work for a man. And I was speculating that there may be, there's definitely cultural reasons for it, definitely societal reasons for it. Um, but there also may be some biological and evolutionary reasons for it. And, um, you know, man, people didn't like that I said that. <laughs> some people didn't like it. Yeah. Because, you know, I'll tell you what, what makes me angry, because, like, I, I definitely don't think I'm, uh, cause someone said, oh, that's sexist to even say and whatever. Oh, God. Well, yeah, which is stupid. Uh, if anybody that knows me, uh, I mean, you look at the women like I like, look at my girlfriend for example. One of the things I love most about her, even my ex-wife, I love very strong, independent people. I love to be challenged. I, and I also, I have a daughter, and I don't even. I've heard people say things like encourage your girls to do, you know, science and to do math because there's. And I, I feel like that's even. I feel like that might even be 
condescending. That's patronizing, dude. Come you on. know, it's it's it's. I don't. There's no difference for me one way or the other. And yeah. anybody who knows me will tell you that I don't. I don't. Uh, that I'm not sexist in the in the slightest. But nonetheless, what makes me upset is that there's subjects that have become. You can't talk about that. You can't talk about certain subjects at all. You can't even discuss them objectively mm. because uh, they've been politicized. Mm-hmm. Like politics has, has come in and has, and that's what politics does very well. And I want people to, I hope people understand this, that politics in Western societies, especially in America, is, uh, you know, it's a trillion dollar business, not a billion dollars, probably a trillion dollar business. And most of the money goes into manipulating people into believing and voting certain ways. And what they'll do is they'll take topics and they'll make them political so much so that even bringing it up, will people will assume that you're either a conservative or a liberal or even bringing it up, people will say you're sexist, racist, you're an idiot, whatever. Like, uh, like for example, climate change is one of them. Like, I know people right now are like, oh, it's a f-. like there's there are actual scientists who are, and whether you disagree or, or, or agree with them, there are actual scientists who are trying to debate whether or not human actions are making these huge changes in the cli- climate and whether or not they're as big of a deal as some people would say. That's all they're saying. But oh boy, if you just say that, like you're awesome, you can't even talk about it. Um, or if someone does a study on the differences between men and women or boys and girls, like people get really upset about it. Like you can't even talk about so economics is another one. This is what really makes me laugh. Like economics is kind of a science. It's like you look at it and you see supply, demand, this works, that doesn't work. But it's so politicized that even arguing, like if I were to come out and say, Hey, maybe, Maybe uh, this uh, particular program, this particular program that we have for the city, let's say we, we, we put a program together where we're putting money towards after school programs for inner city kids, right? And if I were to come out and say, hey, let's examine the numbers and see if this is doing anything beneficial. Just saying that, people would get pissed off. Like, are you against kids? Are you against these poor kids? And so it just makes me angry that people can't even – Hmm. discuss because I I don't like if you could have the most wrong idea in the world and it can be sexist or racist or horrible but I'd like to hear it right so that I can shut you down intellectually or so at least maybe we can change your mind but like mm-hmm. trying to like shut down a conversation before it even starts or the fact that people are scared to say things is crazy to me like let's just talk uh, another one is like like uh, and here's an easy one that I know everybody will agree on that's why I'm gonna bring it up scientists have a very tough time studying uh, certain drugs. They can't, for the longest time, like scientists could not study LSD or psilocybin or marijuana or, you know, these types of substances. They couldn't even study them taboo. because yeah. they, were, they were politicized so strongly that someone can't, I mean, you can study anthrax and Ebola. Like you can literally, as a scientist, you get the right clear. It's easier to get your hands on Ebola than it is <laughs> for a long crazy. time than it was to get funding for a study on LSD to see if it benefits people with, you know, trauma or something like that. And that's starting to change, but it was just an example. So yeah, that was the controversy I had this weekend. Was that where had people hit you up? I got a couple messages, and then one of our forum members, you know, was like, uh, you know, you shouldn't even, you know, entertain the idea that there may be a biological difference between men and women. Because it's so dangerous. I'm like, no, actually, I think it's dangerous to be scared to even talk about anything. Right. Because then we don't know what the answer is. And let's just say for... Well, especially the way you the way you presented it. I mean, that's the one thing. One of the things that I think is so great about uh, when you share information like that is I, I your delivery, I think, is is really well. I mean, and, and I know sometimes you talk in certainties about stuff, but typically it's the stuff that's uh, more in our wheelhouse, like when it's fitness related and we, we are certain about it. But then when we're, when we're speculating, you always preface before you say anything. You say, you know, hey, this could be this and it could be that. What the fuck is wrong with that? You well, could, I, yeah. uh, it, it could be true. It could be wrong, too. But when you say it like that, I think you you set the table well for dude, that. I'll give you another example. I'm about to just I'm just going to dance on the third rail right now. I'm going to just lay on top of it. Right? <laughs> Here I, go. Just, <laughs> I just saw an article. I need to pull it up where I think it's in New Zealand, a uh, transgender female won uh, a weightlifting competition, like blew away 
her opponents. And I think I'm saying it right. Transgender female means she was born a man, a man and, and then, and then yeah, made transition. A, yeah, a woman. And uh, it's become politicized to the point where if you say she may have a gen- like an advantage, like a major advantage because she was born a man and went through puberty as a man, you are now labeled uh, intolerant, um, you know, a, a bigot, and oh, you're probably a conservative. And the other side, you have to, if you're a liberal, you know, you have to agree with the fact that no, it doesn't matter. We're all, you know, she's a transgender female, so she should be able to compete. And all this. I think that's silly. Like, let's first of all, let's discuss it and not call each other names and make it political. And let's also use our f- like hard science. Like, uh, I, it's, she went through puberty as a man. Probably has an advantage. That's my that's my strong, strong, strong opinion. <laughs> and uh, it, it could be wrong, but it's my strong opinion. <laughs> and why can't we say that? Right, like, why right, can't right. I, why can't we we talk about that? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so, but maybe I'm wrong. But and I'm not being a bigot at all. I could care. I, I could care less. I've you know. It's just like we should be able to say. Yeah. You were born as a man. You went through puberty. Well, it's just crazy how much you have to dance around the wording of how you're even presenting that, dude. It's, because it's just like, uh, duh. It's yeah. well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> like, look, there's at, differences. There you know? was like, a, it's not like a big deal. Like, it, there's differences between men and women, and if you don't want to admit that, then that's you know that's foreign to me. So I, you know, I don't understand like how we can like we're getting to this point where everything's so homogenized. Why can't we be different? Like what's wrong with that? I, I because like again, it, it's if you say we're different and there may be a biological reason for it. Yeah, you can be labeled, uh, you know, like I said, uh, sexist or a bigot or um, you, you're ostracized. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, Which is, and here's the interesting thing to me, like, you know, uh, feminists stand up very strongly for the rights of women, and which I think is awesome. Yeah, of course. But in cases like this. They're silent, which is weird to me. I don't. If I was a woman, I would be like, "Wait a minute! What about those women who are competing against this transgender female?" And th- there's a lot of science that says that they may have a genetic advantage. Mm-hmm. Why aren't we standing? I don't know. It's very strange to me how how people are so silenced they it's, can't even. I think discuss. it's it's more they don't know they don't know what to say or do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more confused. <laughs> it's like crickets. It's, it's yeah. part of the reason why I stay away from the goddamn topic I know. as much as I can. It's so you're you not going to get anywhere with it. Is, you is can't. I feel like, like any time <laughs> I've ever tried to talk about it, yeah. like I I, oh, I end up stepping all over my own fucking tongue. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, so it's just like I uh, I don't give a fuck what anybody does with their body. Be to each their own. When it comes to competitive sports like that, it's just that's like, where well, it gets a little interesting. Yeah. Well, it just it it seems to. It seems to me that like however you were born, so whatever you do from there, that's totally up to you. Like you know, to each yeah. their own. Like I said, I think that's totally fine. But as far as playing competitive sports, I think that you would have to fall under however you were born. I just feel like that's only fair. Or or you're not that much different than the athlete who's competing with steroids or taking that. Then if that's the case, then let them do all that too. Like if you if if hormones don't play a, a role or a factor in an advantage, then. Then, then all the women and men should be able to take testosterone, well, steroids, and then whatever it, you know. So, I mean, I know. Okay, my position is I definitely think there's an advantage. I think if a, uh, if a, a boy uh, is stopped from going through puberty um, and you know transitions then as a, a female, then I think that that advantage might disappear. But I think if they go through puberty, even if they change the hormones, they no longer have a high, you know, lots of testosterone. I still think there's an advantage. And I'll tell you what, I don't see too many transgender males winning competitions like you don't see the opposite too much where like a woman transitions to a man and then wins a weightlifting competition yeah. there was that one MMA athlete uh, who was a transgender female who's in the cage beating the fuck out of you know other female competitors like that was kind of a debate but the people who even argued against that were like hammered like how dare you bring that up as a potential so I don't know. To me, it's just like let's talk about it. <laughs> Fuck, let's talk look, about look it. Man. M- mind pumps ruffling some feathers Yay! this week, man. Yeah. Not even by on purpose either. I didn't even see that coming. I didn't yeah. see you know, all. So yeah, what, I, what happened with you? <laughs> so I, I walk in the gym yesterday. I uh, I was at uh, Gold's or what's co- now called American Barbell. I I was down there and ran into one of our buddies who r- remain nameless just because I don't want to get myself in any more trouble than I already have. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, him and I are chopping it up. We're talking. He's like, hey, man, I was over at uh, Tori's gym yesterday. And he's like, oh. he said, and I was wearing uh, my mind pump shirt. And he walked up to me right away. I was just like, what the fuck's up with that? I'm talking shit, man. And I was like, and he goes, what did you do, bro? And I'm like, 
what? And I'm, it, it just it didn't dawn on me. I forgot that we had just did that episode, and that's why on the I don't know if you saw on the forum. I asked the was forum, this the one where you said that he was doing too much cardio or something like that? Yeah. yeah. So and, and so I I do want to make a a formal apology because <laughs> <laughs> I did well, he's go your friend. Isn't I he? did go, but well, yeah, I wouldn't call us like friends. Like we don't hang out. I've never uh, until you spend the night at my house. I don't I ever consider you that much of a friend. Like if we haven't if I haven't spent the night at your house, you haven't spent the night at my house. Like yeah. we're just acquaintances. So we're right? have sleepovers. I did that yeah, a long yeah, time ago. Yeah. Until yeah, once you've slept over yeah. one time. We're now considered like friends, right? So he you rubs, guys, then he rubs your ears. You guys have both have spent the night at my house at yeah. least once in your life, so we are now officially like okay, so, cool. r- real friends, not just acquaintances or coworkers, cool. right? Yeah. So Doug's still got to spend the night. Although you want, Doug you and I have spent the night together, glow. so it doesn't matter, right? So you got to yeah. spend the night together. To me, that's just that's what forges a true friendship. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at this point, we're just good acquaintances, right? Yeah. You know, we both compete. We're both uh, IFBB pros, men's physique guys. Um, and I got nothing but good things to say about the guy. And I feel bad because the only reason why it popped in my head was somebody was asking a question about, uh, I don't remember what the question was. It was related to, um, Bill, oh, uh, your body burning muscle. Oh, doing too much cardio. And us talking right. about the, the real science on how that works, that our body is actually adapting to be more efficient at running all the time. It's not literally eating up and burning muscle. And we were talking about that. Well, I had just that morning had tuned into his Insta story and I, you know, I follow what he's doing. I, I see his new gym and stuff like that. And I think it looks fucking awesome. Super happy, excited for what they're, what he's doing over oh, there. He, he actually owns a gym. Yeah. A really nice one. In San fact, Jose? and I've been meaning nice. to reach out and actually, uh, go over there and check it out. It's, it's beautiful. He just finished it and opened it up. Is it all cardio? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I just I'm trying to do a formal <laughs> apology yeah, here, dude. Right. And you're throwing jabs I'm right sorry. now. I don't even know. I don't even know him. I, I didn't. No re- I, okay. Start over. So I listened to it. Right. And you know, I didn't need where, where I, went too far was I referred to him as a cardio queen so that was inappropriate so I apologize because that's an insult right that wasn't it wasn't intended to say that it flew out of my mouth because I have no fucking filter uh, the the reason why I did though is I had just been recently following his journey and he does a lot he does a ton of cardio and he's known for that and you know he shares on his Insta story so if you put it out there all the time like I mean fuck you, know, you should be able to talk about it right like mm-hmm. he's doing cardio three times a day you know and it's yeah. they're twenty minute bouts so whatever it's in the public domain but the point is he has this really lean incredible physique and you know for guys that are in men's physique or bodybuilding that are wanting to build more and get bigger. I wanted. I was just using him as an example because I know he has a large page. So I apologize for the cardio queen statement. I didn't mean to like. It was not meant to be a slide or a jab whatsoever. Uh, so I didn't need to go that far and say that. But I I do stand by my statement that that's that's a fact. If you continue to do lots of cardio like that, that's what's going to happen, right? You're not going to be able, your body is. You're telling your body it's not advantageous for it to have a bunch of bulky muscle on it because you're running all the fucking time. So. The point is that I was just trying to use that as an ex- that as that as an example, and not trying to knock the dude and what he's doing. So, but I guess he walked up to our boy <laughs> and said, "Like, what the fuck? What did I do to Adam? Like, why is he calling me out oh, like no. that?" And I was like, "Oh shit!" Well, you he know, obviously so. <laughs> you obviously respect the guy because I I think you, for you to even apologize uh, yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, yeah Adam well, doesn't do that. No, he doesn't yeah. unless he actually means so. it. Well, because if he didn't go. mean it, you'd, you what you would end up doing is doing a whole episode on why. He should go fuck yeah. himself. Well, which I, you didn't. So. I mean, well, it's true, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I respect that he didn't. Uh, I, I respect that he didn't fire back. This is the way I envision it probably played out because this is what happens in with people, right? People. He. I bet he doesn't even listen to the show that much, if ever. I'm sure somebody who does listen to the show saw an opportunity to walk over and start shit and be like, hey, did you hear Mind Pump yeah. Adam fucking talk shit Super about you shit, on man. his show? And I bet he probably didn't even go and listen. I bet he probably just, as soon as he saw an opportunity to talk to one of our mutual friends, said something and knowing that it'd probably get back to me. And I'm like, you know, it wasn't like I was talking shit. I'm not, you know, if I was going to do that, you would know, you know, and you would feel it for sure. <laughs> you get tagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you know what, though? I mean, it's true because uh, the science is demonstrating now. You do lots of activity all the time consistently. Your metabolic rate starts to adapt to the and slows down. And uh, we t- I talked about this in that episode where they, yeah. they studied these uh, hunter-gatherer societies that exist today. And they were blown away that these hunter-gatherers' met- metabolic rates or at least they weren't burning more calories than the average sedentary person, which to them was like, how the hell is that even possible? But it's an evolutionary trait. So yeah, doing shit tons of cardio all the time. Mm-hmm. 
it'll do that. Doesn't mean you're not going to get health benefits. Yeah, though. and it doesn't mean too. And I also want to point out because there there are examples of guys I know that you know run like crazy and are still pretty big. I mean, gene- genetics still play the first role, right? The biggest. Yeah, they're still the big role. But it, what what I have found is when you're a body type already, if you struggle to build muscle, like my frame, like I have leaning out is very easy. Like I have that, you know, I know we talk somatotypes don't really exist anymore, but for just for argument's sakes, we'll say, you know, I'm an ectomorph body type, right? So it's very easy for me to lean out. I get on the treadmill and it like just falls right off of me. My body wants to be that. I've been fighting my whole life to be a bigger guy. So with somebody who's like that, if you're that person, this is is a very important thing to pick up on and learn. Now, if you're the opposite, it's totally different. Like, right, if you're somebody who you know, it just holds on to muscle and you can build really easy and it's tough for you to lean out. The opposite is true here, right? It's maybe someone like that. Like, and I, I only use the, the, the man because he has a, a similar body type. I know he has an ectomorph body type like mine. And that's an example of somebody who doesn't need to do that as much mm-hmm. because their body already will go that way really easy. In fact, it's probably more of a struggle. I'm sure if you were to ask him mm-hmm. openly and if he would be candid about it, would tell you that, you know, building and putting size on is probably mm-hmm. more of a struggle, just like it is for me. It's tougher for us to mm-hmm. be a bigger, bigger guy. We should make a trip down to his gym. Check it off. It's a new gym. Is it in the area? If yeah, if we're still, uh, if we're still okay, yeah, we're still, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I, I like, fuck you guys. I, you know, I had a couple <laughs> people listen to it and, and then tell me. I said, listen, if to, let me know if I came off that way or you felt that way because I, I'll definitely reach out to him and write a formal apology to him if it came off that way because I was not intending it to be that. Way. And then they, everybody confirmed like, no, dude, you weren't a dick. If they know you, you could be a total dick. Like you weren't. A d- <laughs> <laughs> you know you're a, you know you're a dick when that's when that's the statement. Like, well, it came off dickish, but knowing you, <laughs> it was really it nice. was really nice. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like you're it talking to a friend. Yeah. 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 No, this. Uh, what, did you guys do anything this weekend? Anything different? Yeah, I yeah. did. Did you? I had my mom's boyfriend. Oh, that's right. Made a visit to me. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. Does she know anything yet? I don't know. She's, Maybe you shouldn't she's say she's listen to this show. She doesn't right? listen to this show. Yeah, Dude, yeah, if she yeah. finds out my... through Mind Pump. Well, I don't think it was like a big formal secret, anyways. And if it does, it's whatever. You know. Oh, oh no! no. no. Yeah, 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 no, I don't think it was. It, it, yeah. it was. It was. I asked him. I said, you know, is, have you guys talked about this? Is it like going to be? He's like, oh yeah, no, no, we discussed it. I just wanted to come down and talk to you. So first of all, uh, you know, my mom has uh, got a new boyfriend. They've been dating for about three months or so. I had lunch with him maybe like a month or so ago. Got to know him. Real nice guy. Uh, and then like last week, he slid in my DMs. Oh. And I was just like, well, at first I like had to check and see who it was. I'm like, who is this? And I was like, oh shit, that's Lonnie, my mom's new boyfriend. And he he says, hey, you know, I'd love to you know, uh, chat with you when you get a chance. And uh, sent me over his cell number. And so I called him like a couple days later and said, hey, man, what's up? Talk to me. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, you know, I was kind of thinking we could do this in person. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah, no, that's cool. What are you thinking? And so we, I said, you know, Saturday, I'm going to be around. I got Katrina's family's got a, a, a wedding thing we're doing. We're going to be there all day at her mom's house. Just come stop by, say hi or whatever. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm, in, I'm going to be in the Bay Area around that time anyways. So he rolls up and he gets there and, you know, Right away, I kind of have an idea, though, like, what's going on? I'm like, this is just kind of different that he's reaching out that way. I'm like, I and I knew that they are they're talking about moving in with each other this this summer. And so I'm like, oh, I bet like he's going to probably propose to my mom before they they uh, move in together. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, that's what it was. He came down to uh, kind of, I guess, get my blessing on that. Yeah, and I which thought, I, I I think is cool, dude. Like, no, I, I think because here's the thing: it's a lost art, dude. It's a lost art that you know men, um, you know, they don't go by this sort of old school kind of uh, like courting process or like even just like getting the respect, giving the respect. Like, so I went through this whole process when I was like going to ask for you know the blessing for to to marry Courtney. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that like, you don't think is a big deal, but then when you're on the other end of that, you know, like, like it's, it's just cool. Right. You know, so it's, no, chivalry is dead, bro. And I feel like that, you know, you don't see it often. And when someone does it, I thought that was cool. Um, you know, my, my mom doesn't, you know, obviously speak to her father and like that. So I'm, you know, to have him, it's different being the kid. You know, like I'm, yeah. the, I'm the son, right? So, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, but you're the you're definitely the patriarch yeah, of the family, for sure. So that's why he came to you. Yeah, and I thought that was recognized. I felt like that, and it, for him to recognize that that early on in their relationship, I'm sure your mom told him, and too. to do that, I thought that yeah. was pretty cool, and I uh, uh, had a lot of respect. We had a great talk, man. I, I shared with him just to give him a heads up that you know how crazy my mother was, and said you know hey, just <laughs> <laughs> look out Dude, for you're, this. You're, you're winning so much <laughs> lately, <laughs> lately on these episodes, bro. <laughs> so, Justin, why everybody stop listening to us? Justin, you can't say yeah. anything controversial. I know. Me and Adam, I'm, I'm me and thinking Adam about are, are it. I'm like, wait a minute. Hmm. But, what can uh, I say that's going to piss he, people off? He, uh, he was great, man. And actually, um, all the things that like concerned me that I thought maybe uh, he would have a hard time with my mom, I thought, like, man, I, they've already kind of handled that in, in the, the first three months they were dating. And I was like, you know what? This dude's going to be really good for my mom. I think there's a. I think they complement each other, uh, complement each other really well. And I think he's a good guy. And I, I have a lot of respect for him for doing that. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So good deal. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah man. Congratulations oh, man. to my yeah. mother if she yeah. even listens yeah. to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cats out of the bag. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, by the way, he's proposing yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a ring and everything. I, I, had, yeah. I had an interesting thing happen this what? weekend. So my daughter had her recital. Mm -hmm. So I remember I told you guys I was taking her to her dance, uh, her dance recital. So right. we go there and um, first of all, I get real emotional when my kids do anything. And I mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. I can, a I can see. Uh, you know why we laugh? Because we can, we yes, can see no, it. I, Bro, yeah, I it, can totally be, see this it can be anything. It doesn't even have to be that spectacular. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm just watching and she comes up and I'm and like, she's so magical. I'm fucking sweating because I'm so excited. And like, yeah, yeah. and she was just. Just shaking her little booty up there and dancing and she was totally into it she did so well and i definitely shed a few tears and my girlfriend gives me a, a hug and a pat on the back and which made me feel even dumber <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, here's the tissue sweetie yeah. <laughs> but so this was the first time this was the very first time that me and my girlfriend hung out not really hung out but were with my ex-wife and her boyfriend. Oh shit! Yeah. Wow. Oh, you did not share wow. this with us. Yeah. So she brought. Man, you guys she, are making this. She, she brought her boyfriend, and I had. Now, did you know this going into it? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you knew. Wow. I encourage it. Here's the thing. Here's the difference between me and my ex. I am not awkward around her boyfriend <laughs> because I says I, says you right. I'm not. I mean, <laughs> you know what? I walk up to the guy. I'm I sure shake. He's more awkward. Yeah. I I shake. His, he seems pretty cool. He seems like yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any problem with him being around my kids. All right. He's a cool guy. I mean, if he wasn't, he would know right away. Yeah. But he's a, he seems fine. Uh, I mean, I walk up to him. I give him, you know, I shake his hand. I have conversation with him. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show my kids, because here's what happened that I notice. Here's what I notice with my children that I pick up on is that when you're a kid and your dad or your mom has a boyfriend, they, even if they like the person, like my, like my girlfriend's so amazing with my children, right? My kids love her, but I could see in the beginning how they felt like, could they tell her that they really liked her? And, and could they really have a lot of fun with her because they felt like maybe they were portraying their mom? You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but if they saw that their mom was really cool with my girlfriend and they were friends, then they wouldn't have this, this thought in their mind, this stress, you know what I mean? That, oh, here's yeah. this other... It's not a competition. Like, no one's ever going to replace their mother, just like no one's ever going to replace their father. And so I want my kids to see me be cool with this guy who is sees them sometimes so that if they end up, you know, having like, I don't want them to be rebellious, rebellious towards him because they feel like they're honoring me. Right. Like that'll cause problems. And if he's a cool guy and he brings value into their life, like that's great. That's a great thing. So it was an opportunity to kind of, to try and do that. Like I, I was like, for, oh, to forge this. Yeah. I want everybody to see, but it was still kind of awkward. Yeah. Like I, my ex isn't very, she's not, uh, she, she tries a little bit, but she has a little bit more of an issue uh, with it than I do. Maybe because my girlfriend uh, is around my kids more than her boyfriend is. So it's maybe doesn't feel balanced. I don't know. But um, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, my parents were there, so my parents got to meet so we, my we, ex's wow. boyfriend. Wait, yeah. back up a little yeah. bit, though. So what do you mean by that? Did she, like, get... Uh did she get awkward like with like a handshake or hug? What did you like go in like for something like you that? You just or feel <laughs> like just our surface conversation. You like, just hey, you it's can, a nice day out here, right? Hey. The clouds they look uh, fluffy. You can just feel just it. In. Group hug, everybody. Just, <laughs> yeah, you can just feel the the energy is just a little bit awkward. You know what I mean? Mm. Which is totally totally understandable. I'm not oh, saying yeah. anything. Yeah. Totally understandable. 
Um, but I'm trying to talk her into like doing something all of us together, like for the kids. Like, like I, a foursome? Wow. Yeah, like no. Hey, Adam takes it there. <laughs> no thanks. I'm cool. Dude, you guys were doing serious adult stuff yeah. this weekend. Uh, I what, was not. Were, yeah, you, yeah. I saw you. I saw your poor core uh, in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, I was, having, I was having a great time. Just just jumping and kicking rocks and you know throwing logs and all that stuff with my kids. We actually went to the pet store and we bought a bearded dragon, so... Yeah, I got them that. That's, <laughs> that's cost more than having a dog, uh, by the way. Isn't bearded dragon like a, a slang term for vagina? No, it's a lizard. Is it? Well, I know it's a that lizard. That would be awesome. Uh, but I thought you could. I thought you. Some people would say that, like the bearded <laughs> yeah. dragon. Hey, come visit my bearded dragon. Or is that just, you know is that, is that yeah. just me? How big? How, 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 big is, how big is he right now? He's just he's small. They uh, get big though. They, don't oh, they? Yeah, they, get, they, they get, get big. Yeah, they get real big. I fed them like fifteen crickets and like just you know it's fun to watch them like inhale these things. Now, what do you do when he gets old and dies? Do you make him into like a belt or yeah, something? Probably shoes. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> asshole. Know I, don't, I know. I just got them. They <laughs> live a long time, don't they? I think so. A long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Like 500 years or something The like kids that. love him, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My fine. youngest, I, I worry fine. about him because he's like, he's kind of like uh, Lenny from Of Mice and Men. Oh, you know what I mean? So he wants to <laughs> kill him? I'm just it. like, no, don't squeeze. Don't squeeze. <laughs> like, you have to open palm. Like, that's the rule with him. So he doesn't, because <laughs> he's done that with like, uh, you know, a blue belly lizard. He's like, I caught one, dad, I caught one. It's not moving. And he's like shaking it. <laughs> he you know, explodes. He's, he's, his grip <laughs> is tight. That kid is strong. <laughs> and he's only four years old. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so yeah, I have to, I have to regulate a little bit with that. But they took off for San Diego. And so now I get to, you know, take care of the, the lizard. Wait now. a minute. Right now you're alone? Mm-hmm. At home? Yeah. Oh shit. Oh yeah. Porn hub oh and chips God, and it's pizza. Be epic. <laughs> <laughs> Get the tissues out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God. Actually, uh, I, actually we sh- you should sleep over, dude. You should sleep over at my house or Adam's no, house. Oh, fuck you guys. Yeah. I, I will enjoy myself. Can, can I sleep by over? myself? I See, come over. now do you no. share, do you share with your wife how much you enjoy that? Because I feel guilty when I tell Katrina because she's the opposite. Yeah, she's just, like when she leaves, you're like, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I can't say that like, because I I just I've. You know, I don't know if it was being a single guy for as long as I was, or what, but I just something about having a whole bed to myself and spreading my well, legs. Even if it's out just and, one night, you know, it's like, oh wow, this is different. You know, it's, it's, I'm it's partially why it. I love staying in like hotels. I love going to like yeah. a real fancy hotel and have a big giant bed with all kinds of fluffy pillows and all to myself oh, and you like splay out. Oh yeah, like yeah. a starfish. Man. I don't like being alone at all. Oh wow. No, well, not. I mean, not that I hate yeah, it. You're it's, a major spooner. That's why. Oh, it's yeah. true. Yeah, you yeah. know firsthand. I I don't. Um, no, I, I mean, I'm okay with it. It's all good, but. I, I enjoy being around people so much that yeah, like I if too. I were alone for a while, I'd end up be inviting someone over and be like, "Hey, come sleep over." Well, I could see that because when I had my mm. when I had my place, I remember did you, you must have had, did you have people over all the time? Well, you know, I went through phases, right? So I had it was a three bedroom, right? And I had at one point I had both rooms rented out, and then I realized I didn't like that. That was just too much chaos in my own house. So I was like, okay, th- we'll get rid of that. So then I always had like one roommate, and then I went through a phase. Where I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't need anybody to rent from me. I'm gonna like I just want the place to myself. And for I think for like two years straight, I had just the house myself. It was a bit lonely then. Mm. So the my favorite was when it was like my best friend, you know, renting a room in there, and it was him and I, and he was busy and had his thing going. But then I every still, once in a while you see each other. Yeah, yeah. So we still had we I still had somebody around because otherwise a house just feels really like lonely yeah. when mm. you're all by yourself all the time. But mm. there there's some perks to it. I mean, I I'd vacuum naked and shit and fucking. Dude, I do that anyway. house. Yeah. I do that too, yeah. <laughs> My kids hate it. Yeah, I'm sure they do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dad, put it away. Put the bearded dragon away. All right. Let's, yeah. let's bring on the bird. Today's Quaw is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Our first question is from JC Martinez 96. This is a serious question. How do you oh, last longer serious. in bed? Oh. JC usually finishes really quick with his girlfriend and <laughs> is frustrated <laughs> because he wishes he could go longer and... 
did not have to stop when she is starting to enjoy it. Dang. <laughs> well, let me tell you. This is like the, this is like old mind the pump. age old battle. Right I feel like here. this let is old s- mind pump type <laughs> questions. I was like, you know what? We need to bring some. I old- love this question. Follow my method, and I guarantee you'll last oh, man. 120 seconds. All you gotta uh, think is, uh, yeah. No, so. Something disgusting. Oh, no. So you can definitely train yourself to last longer. Um, one of the one of the most effective ways to do it, believe it or not, besides you know thinking of shit while you're having sex to try and keep yourself from right. going over, yeah, is when you masturbate. This is legit. I now. thought of Roseanne Barr singing the national anthem. That's always Ooh, good I almost, for me. I almost, came, I almost finished. Uh, one of the, this is true now. Uh, this is actually a technique you can you can utilize when you masturbate. Bring yourself to the brink of orgasm, but don't let yourself orgasm. Allow yourself to come down a little bit and then uh, get back, you know, masturbate more. Bring yourself to the brink, come back down. And you do this five or six times in a row to train yourself to control that feeling. This is actually a legit Mm. technique um, that I read about. Some people actually enjoy masturbating this way anyway. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it, uh, <laughs> recent study <laughs> yeah. confirmation but i uh that's one of the techniques to <laughs> tug's dying over there that's <laughs> because he saw you point at yourself that's why <laughs> who's got two thumbs and likes that technique yeah. what are you guys talking about <laughs> this guy uh but it's a technique that's actually uh if you go to like a sex therapist or whatever um they'll actually uh, try and teach you this technique uh to do this also um Having, believe it or not, things like uh, stress and the anxiety around it will actually cause it to happen sometimes. So sometimes what will happen with men is that they'll have so much anxiety over finishing too quickly that one of two things will happen. They'll either A, finish quickly, or B, they'll, be, they'll have issues with erection. So they'll go mm. the opposite because they're so anxious it's about like, it. It's like when you're teeing off for golf and you're like, don't hit it in the water, don't hit it in the water, and you hit it in the water. Yeah, I mean, uh, here, here's something you could do right now, like talk to your girlfriend about it and tell her, say, baby, listen, you, I I get too excited. I want to finish too soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know when I need to stop, but I'm going to keep doing stuff to you while I try to recuperate. Mm. And then we'll do this back and forth type of thing. And I don't even think she'll mind. She'll probably like that. You know what I'm saying? No. That might even be something she enjoys. No, of course. That's, I think that's the... Okay, so I got. I love when Mind Pump gives advice on shit that's <laughs> oh, not fitness related. Well, it's uh, mm-hmm. so I got to do a disclaimer with mine too. I don't know how we do this, Doug, but um, yeah, try I, sheepskin condoms. Yeah. yeah uh, so are. yeah, disclaimer first on this. I'm not recommending this. I'm just going to tell you what I used to do. So yeah. you get a really small rubber band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that somewhat works actually. Uh, so. Uh, one muscle relaxer, two beers, and two puffs off of marijuana. Oh my god! So yeah. Adam, just, yeah, I know. Just... I, well, <laughs> fuck. If I'm being honest, right? If we're gonna keep shit real here, uh, and I will tell you what, it not only it works so well that it, honey, plug your ears here because she's not gonna like this one. This is like uh, taking me all the way back to the probably the second or third girl that I ever ever slept with. She was uh, she was thirty, and I was only like twenty twenty one years old. And, uh, you know, I had I had figured this formula. I figured this formula out by accident. It was just by accident that the, everything had come together right here. Like, I remember I was training hard, and I had just happened to take a muscle relaxer. We also decided to go this out. This is then. your, again, your personal story. Yeah. Don't do this yeah, shit. Yeah, that's the disclaimer, right? So someone dying. I'm not, I'm not recommending this to anybody because, of course, most of those bottles say do not drink with alcohol, doing those things oh like that. God, so I, I'm just, I'm just going just gonna to put it <laughs> out the there that this was, by. <laughs> this was something that uh, I did. <clears throat> and, and, and I do want to preface this with this. Uh, I think it, if you are with your girlfriend and you guys have been together for a long time and this is still happening this is a very awesome thing so that's awesome that you can still uh like just go that i mean i know you're trying to please your girl but that's awesome that you are that hyped to have sex with the same girl you've been probably been having sex with for quite some time so that's an awesome trait to have first of all but i get the idea of wanting to do that and i remember being 20 21 years old and i always uh dated or hooked up with older women and you don't want to be the twenty year old boy who like, you know, as soon as she touches you, you you orgasm, right? So Yeah, but when you're twenty, you just go again, right? Yeah. Well, yes and no. I okay. mean so or <laughs> or you, all, yeah, or yeah. or you I did, you know, I took a muscle relaxer, two beers and then two hits off of a joint. So that was kind of my 
uh, recipe for a good three to four hour session. And oh my god, <laughs> the uh, it was uh, the the muscle relaxer obviously relaxes your muscles. It actually it kind of numbs you down there. And then the one to two beers also. And you got to be careful because uh, you could go too much of all of that. Like you don't, there, there is a fine line. Like, and I, I definitely flirted with all that. I thought like, oh, okay, well, if that made me go for like three hours, what if I did two of those and three of this and four hits or whatever? And so I found a sweet spot for myself that that was, I could still orgasm, but then it would be like these hour long plus sessions and there was like magical. If I overdid it, it would be terrible because then I would end up having sex for like four hours and I couldn't come. So there's definitely like a fine line here of not to mention just and then they're sore. Well, there's also there's also things like you can go to uh, sex shops, have these. Uh, you can spray your dick with this this <laughs> yeah. numbing. It's like a spermicide or something. It's a numbing cream. So mm. you you know once you get hard, and I've used this too. I've tried everything, dude. So <laughs> wow. this is this is actually in my wheelhouse here. So if you uh, <laughs> yeah. if you if you spray your dick, I feel with like this is one of our first episodes. Spray, <laughs> spray, spray your dick. It does. Remind, I know you guys are making fun of me right now, but I'm telling you this uh, this was a thing, and I'm sure at his age, this is the shit that's going through your head. Like you know, I got a woman that's beautiful, it's hot, and I don't want to be a one pump chump. I don't want to. I want to be able Mm. I want her to go home and tell her girlfriends like I just had the best sex of my life with my man and you know, guys take a lot of pride in that now right? what so, happens if you spray the desensitizer on yourself and then you have sex what if she gets desensitized too then well so that that's the downfall of something like that so what you would do is you'd actually put a condom on out over it so you would spray it then you put a condom over and then you would do that so oh I see that, but I learned the hard way what you're saying right now the because hard way literally right so no plan intended there yeah so those were some of the, the methods uh, that I used but I with Sal, I think uh, the older version of me would revert to this because I don't uh, I'm, I don't um, condone you doing all the drugs and things that I'm saying now. Yeah. Now I would ju- what I would do is right before, and I still do this to this day with my girl, is that you know when I'm about to come and if I'm wanting to give her the night of her life, I would just I stop w- whatever I'm in the middle of doing that's about to make me come, and then I spend the rest of that time on her. And pleasing her, and then while I think I'm, that's the best, that's the advice, right? Yeah, there. I mean that's that's the that's the the, the PC advice, and I think yeah. that's fair. But um, I also think for her, I mean, I think for the woman, <laughs> shit, she probably would really enjoy that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't see any. I can't see how a woman's gonna be like, oh, what? You want to go down on me now? That's horrible. Yeah, mm. you know, unless you're bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Justin, how about you? What's your, what's <laughs> Justin? What's your advice? More practice, my man. More practice. Yeah. No, just take just more keep, take keep, more swings, huh? Yeah, yeah. More that's, reps. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough, too. <laughs> yeah, that, you that, get through the honeymoon stage, you know? And then, and that's what I'm wondering how long they've been together, but I'm, I'm pretty sure our boy's been with her for a while, right? I think mm. it, he's uh, he's a longtime forum member and MP family. Like, I think they've been together. Yeah? Do you guys know? I don't know. You guys don't know? You guys know what yeah, that is, right? I have right? no idea. That's, yeah, I do. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I know what it is. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they've been together for a while. I don't know. You have to let us know, because if, obviously, if it's really fresh and new, dude, it's yeah. tough for everybody. Well, they do. I mean, they do have, con- I don't know. They have condoms for that like the same thing you're talking about where it like desensitizes you a bit so you know like they I don't know. I I was never big on on the condom thing, but you know. Justin Justin has the old <laughs> I've heard about it. Justin oh has the, the the old school approach where it's like uh, this is a race, honey, and yeah. if I get there first, that's your fucking fault. You know what? Yeah. I, you know what? Else? Oh, hey, bro. You know what? Something I else? handle my business. We're such we're such idiots too. You know what else is like? What we didn't even say about this is like lengthen your foreplay like spend a lot of time having foreplay because well, yes, then maybe she'll orgasm that's what quickly you, too that's get what really you, advanced with tools that's yeah. what you said I mean that's pretty much what well, you're saying because I mean, you're, yeah. you're if you're not if you're having sex and then you're about to come and you pull out and you do something else that's foreplay is yeah. what you're doing so yeah. Yeah. foreplay is definitely the which I, I mean that's a to me that's a no brainer to me that's the I don't know about you guys and then but pre-game that's the most it, enjoyable I mean I, I enjoy that more yeah. than anything it's a whole fun pre-game it yeah, yeah no to, yeah, to this yeah. to this day that's how I, I have sex with Katrina is that we are foreplaying for a majority of the time, which is you know a good forty five minutes an hour than the last whatever bit is having mm-hmm. sex and then the orgasm part. That's what so. it's like not having kids in the house, Justin? Yeah, yeah, an yeah. hour, but then they're too sore to walk. You know, okay, day, so. <laughs> yeah, just keep it like twenty minutes. Doug, Doug bring us the next question. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Get us I, think, out of I think it's time for the Save next us question. Throw us. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, next question is from Young Gains Fitness. If you competed as a natural, how would this affect your training slash nutrition compared to being on anabolics? So they're asking, uh, 
what would be the difference in your training and nutrition, natural versus being on anabolic steroids? A little bit different, but very little. Yeah. You know what's interesting about this? The reason why you see such a difference sometimes is mainly because you get away with more. Yeah, that's exactly why. When you're on anabolic, so you tend to pro, uh, progress in spite of the mistakes that you make. I think what works best for you as a natural would also work best for you while you're on the ball. That's to me. It's a, that's a no brainer. The the reason why it, and the only reason why it'd be different is out of pure laziness. To be honest, mm. if I'm taking a bunch of anabolics, I know I can get away with having some shittier food in the diet. I know that I can get away with overtraining myself a bit. Like I know I can get away with some of those things. But if you're if you are if you've learned, and this is also why anybody who hired me to help them get ready for a show and they wanted to know about, you know, gear and steroids, anabolics, what, what should I take? I wanted them always to take themselves to the best shape of their lives naturally first before they even considered that. Because once you had those tools and you could do that, if you applied that with anabolics and it was like a whole nother level for you versus you taking anabolics and then kind of like, eh, you're inconsistent with your diet, you kind of overtrain, you don't really focus on your programming very well, and you still can get in pretty good shape as long as you're consistent with your training, right? Yeah, I see a lot of people um, who will get on anabolics and train and whatever, and they'll see results. And then when they stop seeing results, the first thing that they do is they increase the dosage of their yes. anabolics or they change their drugs Yep. rather than <laughs> looking at the training and nutrition. And right. so it becomes all about – the anabolics that they're on. And the, the drawback to that is you never really learn what works really great for you. And this is one of the reasons why I'll, I know people who've took taken anabolics for a while and will go off of them. And then they, they have horrible results and they think it's because they have terrible genes and that right. they need to be on anabolics. And I've had discussions with friends and said, look, the reason why your body's progressing so horribly now is because you are you never really learned how to train your body properly. You're still right. doing the same stuff that you got away with before, but you can't get away with it now. There are some things in nutrition where you might benefit from changing a little bit by being on anabolic, on anabolics. One of those is increased protein intake. I think being on anabolics, actually no, it does demonstrate, studies will show that being on anabolics will increase the rate that you can utilize protein. So, well, I think just in general, both not just protein, but calories, carbs, protein. Because you're just anabolic. Yeah, because right? you're anabolic 24 7. That's the difference, right? The difference is, you know, your body is, and what that means, your anabolic is, your body is primed to build muscle. It's, mm -hmm. you're sending, when you take something synthetic like that, you have a around the clock signal that's saying your body wants to build muscle. So, if you have that signal all the time, you overfeeding, a lot of that overfeeding will go to building muscle. So that's the beauty of that is you, it's actually really tough to overfeed when you're on anabolics. And that's the reason why you see a lot of these meatheads when they train and they're bulking or building, they're just fucking eating everything in sight because they can, because all that extra shit that would normally make a natural person get fat a lot of that is going to building muscle for them because they're anabolic 24-7. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that if that person actually took the same principles, the natural, the guy who's natural, the same diet and training principles and applied that with anabolics, yeah. he would be in a far better Dude, place. The ideal situation is to train exactly like you would if you're natural, right? Because then, then you're getting to get the benefits from that and the enhancement uh, the anabolics provide uh, <clears throat> to that regimen. Because you... The, a lot of times, like, correct me if I'm wrong, like most of the, the anabolic athletes will train, uh, will gain in spite of their poor training habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <coughs> and, and honestly, it's the same rule. Like and what, what Justin's talking about, train the same, is follow the same principles. Obviously, your training is right. not going to be the same because you're probably going to be stronger. You'll probably have a faster recovery ability. So yeah. you may be able to play with intensity a little differently. But follow the same principles. Mm -hmm. This is look. If you look at pro bodybuilders, some of the best pro bodybuilders of all time were natural for a long time oh, before, yeah. like like Kai Green, Ronnie Coleman, like those guys competed as naturals, which meant either a they were natural or b they took very low doses. But look at Ronnie Coleman. There was a year where he because people don't realize this. Ronnie Coleman was a pro bodybuilder for a long time before he became Mr. Olympia, and never really ever cracked the top ten. He was impressive, but he wasn't a top ten bodybuilder. And then one year. 
this was the year I believe uh, Dorian Yates wasn't going to compete, so the Mr. Olympia was up for grabs, and everybody thought. I think Flex Wheeler. I thought everybody thought he was going to win. Ronnie Coleman hits the stage, and he looked crazy. Like all of a sudden, he decided to get on a shit ton of gear, and he'd already been competing for a long time. And the difference was ridiculous. And he he destroyed everybody, destroyed the competition. And till this day, I think Ronnie Coleman's one of the most dominant bodybuilders of all time. In fact, I, my opinion, if he hits the stage, if 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 Coleman and his best hit the stage now, nobody could touch him. Still, well, I, you you yeah, absolutely, because of his size. I mean, he's, I mean, size, <laughs> conditioning. I mean, the guy was just everything, right? Yeah, no, he had a. He had but he looked crazy when he competed <laughs> as a natural. And again, I don't know if he was natural, but he was definitely on less stuff. But even then, he looked crazy. His yeah. back, his wheels, everything was crazy. Yeah, the only yeah, I would, you know, the I would being a guy who's trained his body several times in both both worlds. When I'm on anabolics, I'm training. Uh, I'm increasing my volume at a faster rate. Okay, so that you know, where now like I'm a little more strategic about increasing volume. In fact, I kind of lean more on the <clears throat> less is more type of deal. Where when I'm on anabolics, I kind of flirt more with the oh, that's probably a little more than I needed, but that's okay because I'm on gear. Mm. I'm going to probably recover fast enough to be okay. So that's really the difference with the training, and then the nutrition is. You know, uh, I get to be lazy. I don't have to be so dialed about my food. It's just like as long as I hit my main targets, I can overconsume, and I don't have to worry about a lot of that going to fat. In fact, a lot of it will end up packing more mm -hmm. muscle on. But uh, I definitely think this is also the trap that a lot of guys that utilize steroids as their only way to, or their their main way to get them in the best shape of their lives is they now attach that to the steroid and they think it's it's that. And a lot of it is that for them because. You know they're getting in good shape despite all their poor training, their their poor programming, and their poor nutritional. And habits. one piece of advice: uh, if you're on, because I've seen this happen too. I've seen people go on gear for the first time, and then all of a sudden, dramatically increase their volume and their intensity because they're like, "Oh, I'm on steroids. I gotta, I gotta ramp everything way up." And they barely gain any muscle because they went into overtraining. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Remember that. So if you get on anabolics and you're like, "Wow, I could do." Two and a half hour crazy long workout and barely get sore doesn't mean that that's effective. No, no, you still want to. You'll you get away with a lot of shit, but it doesn't mean it's the most effective way to train. No, so. no, and it's still the, those still the same rules apply. Where you, I mean, we, we are still trying to do the least amount of work to elicit the most amount of change. So you know, there's no reason to ramp up your volume that fast. The difference is, I would be ramping my volume up at a faster rate than I would if I was all natural. But it's you, the, still the same rules apply where you want to inch it up every single week to two weeks versus uh, progressively overload versus ah, doing all of it because you feel <laughs> uh, amazing right out the gates, you know? Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Our next question is from Healthy, Happy, and Free. Free. They have heard it doesn't matter when you consume calories, but they have also heard that they are better consumed at certain times. What is the truth? Is eating most of your calories at night detrimental to muscle growth? So ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, when you consider... Nutrient timing. Yeah, when you consider what you eat uh, in terms of your calories, your macro breakdown, the quality of your food... Uh, if it works for your body, um, the timing of your food is way down the list of importance. It doesn't make nearly uh, a, as big of an impact, not even close to calories, macros, and quality of food. So in the gr big grand scheme of things, if you work a schedule where the only time you can eat at night, like don't stress yourself out trying to change your eating habits. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what the science says. The science says all things being equal – for uh, health, 
for, believe it or not, for fat loss, for muscle building, for longevity, the best time to eat is really a, uh, a, a structured um, limited time. In other words, uh, like intermittent fasting type of deal where people eat within a six hour like eight or hour eight window. hour window. Yeah. So there's science right now and it's not super conclusive yet. Okay. It's just there's, there's a, a lot of studies now that are being done that are all kind of pointing in this direction and it makes evolutionary sense. That if you eat all of your calories within an eight-hour window, it's better for you uh, on most levels. Now, that being said, is it better to eat in the morning or at night? Uh, Some studies will show that eating during the day may be better than eating at night. But here's the problem with those studies, and here's why I would take those with a grain of salt. When you take a huge sample of people... Um, and you're trying to do this survey or whatever, and they're all surveys because it's very expensive and impossible to gather 100 people and lock them in a laboratory and just, you know, feed them what you want. Usually it's surveys where they just ask people questions and they find out, oh, these people eat in the daytime, these people eat at night, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The problem with this is people that tend to eat during the day and not a lot at night also tend to be more health conscious, okay? People who eat really late at night tend to make like it's poor, an afterthought it's an afterthought right. and it tends to be poor eating decisions it tends mm-hmm. to be i didn't eat all day i'm back home from work i'm stressed i'm just gonna eat this fast food or i'm gonna eat this snack that's in my cupboard well or i have a, i have a theory on this right here somebody just asked me this uh they they sent me a dm about um hey i noticed that you um you have you have huge dinners because right just in the last two weeks uh a lot of my you know meals my dinner you know specifically on my fat secret has been like you know eight nine hundred calorie dinners and i said uh yeah sometimes a lot more and sometimes a lot less you know most importantly i'm i'm in i'm consistently inconsistent and to me i think that and my theory is you know, if you tend to always have a really, really big dinner, that probably one of the best things that you could do is actually intermittently, you know, skip dinner or have a really low calorie dinner and then have a higher calorie breakfast the the next week. And to be constantly kind of playing with that, the way we talk about undulating your calories, I also think it's an, it would be smart for you to be kind of confusing your body too on it. If it got, if it's been getting 900 calories every dinner, every single night for the last six months, you know, probably the, one of the best things you could do is probably switch it over to the morning and have the big morning meal and then now have a light dinner and kind of throw a, a curveball at it. So that's just my opinion and my theory. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that because if we consider human evolution, I don't see any humans ever for most of human evolution being presented food and them saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to eat that now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's nighttime. Yeah. Like, no, I, I think humans ate that. Trying sh- to survive. They ate it when it was there. Yeah. Right. So if they got the food and it was a nighttime and they were hungry, I'm going to eat it. It doesn't yeah. matter what time it is. You so. know, it, it's, as far as timing, I feel like it's, it's yes and no, right? And I think, uh, and Justin will probably touch a little bit on this with uh, sports. I feel like sports play a little bit more of a role when timing because timing, yeah for energy yeah, yeah for energy purposes right so for me uh that plays a little bit more of a role most people that ask this question though are trying to lose body fat well it also depends on how adapted you are like what your schedule currently is because like i would say like yeah like let's load up on carbs and all this day before and whatnot and let's let's make sure that we got that kind of an energy going into the game and all that but like it really depends on the individual and their schedule and like when like if you're able to operate without food in your system and that's how you know you're energized and you're charged like keep with that protocol like whatever it whatever it is going into the workout that you feel like you have the best energy and like uh you figured out your your schedule and balance with that um that that's usually where i tend to go um but yeah there's <clears throat> obviously there's there's ways to kind of load especially for an endurance type of a sport or something that's a little extra strenuous you want to really prepare ahead of time uh to make sure you manage your your energy and then how you're gonna be able to manage that throughout the the endeavor so yeah i don't i don't um so the the best studies on nutrient timing when it comes to athletic performance muscle building fat loss the best studies demonstrate that you do replenish glycogen uh faster if you eat post-workout. However, if you don't eat post-workout, your body still replenishes glycogen 
just as effectively Mm -hmm. as it would otherwise. And so it really doesn't make a difference unless you plan on exercising again. Yeah. So like if I had a hard morning workout, Yes, and That's I'm gonna the have point. A, yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna have another hard workout. You in the know afternoon. what's coming in the next day. Yes, or yeah. or that night, I'm better off eating in between rather than going, you know, working out real hard, fasted, and then staying fasted and then working out again. I used to do that for like double days, or you know, a really strenuous week of of practice, and um, you know, like going into the next day, you want to make sure and fuel up. So I would fuel up after my my practice and make sure that, you know, I got that timing, that window in. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it's like, <clears throat> you know, it, 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 you, your body will regulate that. And there's most, I mean, this whole like eat a big breakfast, eat real light in the, in the evening. That's kind of an American thing. Uh, I don't see too many other cultures doing that. Like, I don't think the Japanese and the Chinese have massive, massive breakfasts. Uh, I think they have small, very, very light breakfasts. I know in, in Italy, uh, in Mediterranean cultures, we don't have a huge... A huge breakfast is very much an American thing. In fact, if you go to Europe, many European countries, especially the Mediterranean, there aren't too many breakfast spots where you go and sit down and have these big breakfasts. I, I know my cousins come and visit. They kind of trip out over that where I'll take them to like these breakfast joints where they get big pancakes and stuff. And like, oh my oh, gosh, man. like it's the morning. I'm not that hungry. Personally, for me, eating a huge meal in the morning is super counterproductive. Yes. I feel like shit the rest of the day. I would much, I feel so much better See, eating at night. And this is too where I used to fight coaches all the time because the protocol was to then go in the morning and go to these buffets and like, you know, eat like your pancakes, your waffles, like all this, like, you know, eggs and bacon. And, and I just found, you know, cause we would play around like two, three o'clock in the afternoon and it would just completely drain me of energy. And I was just like lethargic and, and like mentally unclear and going into the into the game, I had this fog. And then I just realized that like I just decided not to eat breakfast and then go into the game. And I loaded up more the 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 day right before that. Yeah. And that really helped. So my energy levels were way better. You know what uh nutrition timing for somebody who is trying to get like in just overall shape, like lose body fat or build muscle. Reminds me a lot of the the isolation movements that guys do for uh you know all these like sideways chest press and like you know this you know weird like angle just to hit a certain tiny little muscle on the body, and I, I actually had this conversation. I ran into our our buddy uh, Johnny not that long ago, and him and I were bullshitting back and forth. And he's getting ready. He hit stage in three weeks, and <clears throat> I was telling him how great he looks right now. And I was like, man, it's it's getting crazy in this gym, man. I, the more and more I see, I come in here, the more I see these stupid exercises that these people are doing. And here's the deal, like, and and he's a guy who does a lot of these stupid exercises. And why it's not stupid for him is because of where his physique is at. Like he, and it's like the and same thing goes for like the meal timing. You will see me as I progress through this whole journey on my Insta story of getting in, you know, competitive shape again, I will start to time my carbohydrates around my pre and post workout. You've done everything else. Now you're starting to play with a small, it's like putting a wing on a fucking Honda Civic. Yes. Like there's, there's no, why? Yes. It's not going to do anything for you. No, that's exactly what it is, is like. It's tough, man. And that's in the, why I use the analogy of why it's like the, the isolation movements. It's the same thing. So when I see like this little skinny kid, you know, who's, you know, trying to build, you could tell he wants to be build muscle and he must have just saw Joey Swole's fucking Instagram doing a sideways chest press. And so he's in there doing that. I'm thinking to myself, man, this kid, I know what he's wanting to do and what he's trying to do. He's really wasting his time with a silly exercise that he could be doing big barbell movements and dumbbell presses and exercises that are going to build so much more muscle on his chest that is going to make his chest look so much better. But he thinks right now that by turning sideways on this chest press, he's going to get his inner chest worked more or his lower pec or whatever fucking Joey Swole is saying that it does. So these guys will do these things, and it's not that they, they these types of movements don't have a place. Just the people that are doing them have no business really doing them yet. It's just you don't you have other big rocks that you should take care of first. And the same thing goes with this nutrition timing. It's it's not to say that there's some science that doesn't support having a, you know, four to one carb to protein ratio post workout within the 20 minute window isn't beneficial for the body. Like sure it is, but you're talking you're splitting hairs when you talk about what a difference it's making it making in your overall physique in the grand scheme of things. There's so many other things that 
that you should be stressing about than you should be actually worrying about carrying a shaker with you that as soon as you get out of the gym, you take it because it's that silly to me unless you're at the competitive level that your body is already so dialed that you're trying to squeeze out every little tiny extra thing that you can give you yeah. the competitive edge, <laughs> then it makes sense. Then it's like, okay, I get why that guy's doing it. But if you're somebody who has, a, and you know who you are, like if you don't look like a fucking pro physique guy on on stage you'd probably have no business doing a sideways chest press or doing these other machine exercises where you're bent over sideways and rear delt flying to just hit the you know the rear delt while you do it and isolate a certain area like dude go do some fucking overhead pressing some squats some deadlifts and some yeah. movements we just gravitate to all that like novelty unique stuff right like whether it's like oh well, my favorite athlete was taping himself this way and, all, and then all of a sudden you see everybody in the gym taping themselves dude. all Crazy. Well, it's also of- easy too. It's also easy. Like nobody wants to go to the gym, yeah, and lift heavy and move some shit. And you know, yeah. a lot of people like to go to the gym and just spend an hour doing these little small movements and walk out with they the want to, They want to wear the uniform. Well, I also I blame the motherfuckers that are sharing it though too because yeah. you, they're, you're, they're on a platform where a ton of people are looking at them. They have incredible physiques and maybe like where they're at in their their journey that you know this you know exercise benefits them a little bit. But they've also done a ton of well, they've laid a huge foundation to get to that point where they even have any sort of and they're probably in the gym for two hours plus a day. So it's like, OK, if you've already been in the gym for an hour and you hit all the big major movers that are going to build muscle and now you're over there doing a sideways chest press, then fucking to each their own. Do it if you want to. But, you know, it's the same thing goes for the meal timing. Like, dude, if you got 30 pounds of fat to lose and you're fucking racing home or you're carrying your shaper, sh- uh, shaker cup to get your 20 minute anabolic window in like. Okay, dude, you're, you, what you should be doing is actually not drinking the shaker cup, walking on the fucking treadmill. That's going to benefit you burning more fat than anything else or vice versa. If you're somebody who's doing the sideways chest press, all these isolation movements, and you're trying to catch your 20-minute anabolic window, no, you should be doing some barbell presses or squats or deadlifts because that's what's going to benefit you your, your physique more than anything else. So it's really about prioritizing and when it comes to nutritional uh, nutrition timing it's way like sal said at the bottom of the list as far as priorities sure is, it, is there some sort of an advantage to it very very little and more than likely that advantage is is minuscule and compared to all the other things you're probably missing ryan sursaw is asking what advice would you give to a young person wanting to start something like mind pump you know what's cool about this question is that when we started mind pump okay hindsight's always 2020 so i can look back now and be like oh this is this is what you should do and this is what we did that was right and we had we knew what we wanted to do but we all had zero experience in this realm none of us had podcasted before Mm -hmm. uh none of us knew really what the formula was going to be to be super you know to, to really blow up and do well what we did have is we you know we had good sound because we had good equipment, thanks to Doug. And we also got on the mics and did not hold back and were honest. And, uh, you know, with our all of our, our combined experience, had lots of knowledge that we wanted to share. Right. So the advice I would give you if you're going to start a podcast or you want to start something like Mind Pump, well, well, number one... Have some life experience first. Yeah. Well, not only that, but see what other people are doing right and, and pay attention to that. But at the end of the day, really got to be true to your message and what you're saying because what I've noticed through podcasts or anything that people really uh, like to listen to or watch is the message is important, but equally as important is the passion uh, that's behind it and the realism that comes across. So if you're talking about something, but you're delivering it in a way where people are really enthralled to listen, you're going to do much better than someone else who may be even delivering the, your you know, great information as well, but they don't deliver it very well. And a lot of that has to do with you really believing in what you're doing. So when you get on the mics, talk about those, the things that you're really passionate about, it's going to come across and it's going to be easy for someone to listen to. The second piece of advice, and this is pretty easy uh, for me to give, is I've seen a few people start podcasts by themselves, which can be done, um, but you're, you're gonna, you're, it's gonna, it's gonna be very difficult because you're gonna need lots of guests, lots of uh, podcasts interviewing people, and it's very difficult to record a podcast by yourself because you're, again, you're just by yourself. One of the things that we have that we're really lucky uh, to have is we have each other, 
and we've got great chemistry, so it makes it a lot easier to bounce ideas off of each other, and it doesn't fall on one person to carry the entire show. And yeah. as if you've been listening to since the beginning of this particular episode, one of us can be very controversial, and the other one doesn't necessarily need to be that way, and it balances out the show. Because trust me, if there were three Sal's, I'm yeah. sure, or, th- yeah. or three people, or three people giving advice to take uh, drugs, and <laughs> so I'm sure we would get well, in trouble, and we wouldn't be. Yeah, here so, long. but it's it's cool to have. We lean on each other a lot for that on the show. Ying, you know, that you, could, that you could talk to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I have a little more to say on this. Um, here's what I see happening a lot right now is, um, and I. I've got somebody who's close to me family wise right now that I'm watching do this. And, and I, and I just, you know, I do my best to be as supportive as I can, but I kind of shake my head too. Like, what are you fucking thinking, dude? Like you, there's other ways to go about this. I think what happens, a lot of people see someone sees like mind pump and they go like, like, Oh shit, look at those guys. Like, you know, they're not even that smart. They're not even that good looking. <laughs> like, you know, they can barely fucking just bought some mics. And- right. And they're like, you know, they, and they I, I could explain some of the shit they talk about. Like I can start a podcast and do this. Well, you know, before any of that happened, maybe like, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is true. Right. Damn Half it. of it. So I think that there's there's ways for you to start to build a network before you, you jump to a platform like podcasting or YouTube. Uh, and, and many other platforms that are big like that that mm. you can monetize. Um, and uh, this was a lot of the journey that I did. So when I got onto Instagram, I got onto Instagram with the intention of building a fitness business like Mind Pump, even though at that time I had no idea it was going to be Mind Pump or it would be with Sal and Justin. Like I, I didn't know that much. But what I did know was I had met a buddy of mine who now works with us, Taylor, uh, T-Dog. And, yeah, T-Dog. <laughs> so I didn't... I call him T-Pain. Uh, Taylor was in his early 20s, and uh, he had built a a social media business. He had built a Facebook page that had, I think, 10,000 plus followers on it, and he had built a brand for himself. And he was making six figures at 20-something years old off of Facebook, and I was extremely fascinated. Like, I had heard of this before, but I didn't know anybody personally that I had seen do that. And then a young guy his age do that. And so I was really impressed. And the first thing that went through my head, and no disrespect to him, and I'm like, if this motherfucker is going to do this, I can do this on the side while I'm doing everything else. Like, I can figure this out. And so at that moment, I began my journey into social media and trying to build a network of people. Now, I made a lot of mistakes that I could go on all day about and share that process. But I think first trying to build a network of people that want to listen to what you say and using a platform like Facebook, like Instagram, like Snapchat, these are all fine. And like, and I think different platforms will appeal to different people based off of your personality. So maybe Mm -hmm. you're funny and you're goofy and you're creative. And so Snapchat works really well, or, you know, maybe you write like really good posts like Sal does and, and maybe like a Facebook platform that's better for reading is, is more you, or maybe you've got really good talent and a really good eye for taking pictures and photos or just gorgeous or a yeah. yeah, or you're gorgeous and you have a badass camera or whatever. And so maybe Instagram is a great platform for you. Whatever that may be, I think finding the platform that fits you the best first and then trying to build a network of people, like minded people, because that's important too. Like you wanna you wanna you wanna fit a genre, right? So why he why how Taylor built a good business was I'll give you the the short version of what he did was it's very popular for shoe guys like myself to be trying to hunt down a pair of shoes. Like when I'm looking for a pair of Jordans that I want to buy, I'll be scouring the internet for it. And Taylor would be a guy that I would find and Taylor would find the shoes and he would be a broker. Now, many guys before him had done this business, but what he did that was really clever was he was not charging a broker fee. He was just putting people together. So people fucking loved him. It was like, hey, this guy has these Jordans. This guy wants to buy these Jordans. He would introduce those people, and he became the middleman who didn't make any money. And what was so brilliant about that was he had a long-term plan. He didn't. He knew he was going to do a lot of work, and he was going to help a lot of people out, and he was going to connect a ton of people and not make any money at first, but he was setting the stage for what he was going to do later on. Now, that's a lot of how Mind Pump was built. There's a lot of things that we did leading up to the podcast that set the stage for it to yeah. organically grow the way it has grown. So you can spend your time right now 
trying to build a network of people. And you know what ended up happening for Taylor was he had all these people on his Facebook that were all shoe guys. So what did he do? He created a business all around shoes. He had an apparel line that, and he made clocks. He made air fresheners. He made keychains. He made T-shirts and sweaters. And he made all these custom things that had his brand on them that like – had, that were sneakers. And of course, if you've got a bunch of sneaker people that are following you, they're probably going to be into having a sneaker air freshener or a sneaker mm-hmm. keychain. It just makes fucking sense. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, that's great advice. And I also think that what we did very well that we don't really give ourselves credit for is we figured out the why. And, you know, Sal kind of mentioned about, you know, what you're passionate about, but really understand like what your message is going to be um, and Ex- our, excellent point. And ours was really to to be counter counter information that um, you know challenged the status quo and challenged the what is considered common knowledge uh, within the fitness and wellness community, and then also to bridge that gap between wellness and fitness, which there's a huge disconnect between the two. And we felt that there was a need to mend uh, those t- two communities together. And, um, you know, just, just for us to kind of, we, we really had to, to sit and have a sort of powwow and, and think about like what that looked like in, in our own minds and, uh, you know, from our own backgrounds, how we could influence and, and voice into that direction. And so everything we've done from here has been, uh, that's been, you know, the cornerstone of, of, you know, how we've gotten to where we are. Um, but at the same time, it's a growth, it's a growth process. And, um, you know, like it it takes a while to kind of figure out like, you know, how, how to organize and monetize. And so we, uh, one thing that we did, obviously we, we didn't, we didn't want to come out and charge and make money and, and, and turn on sort of the monetary, uh, uh, funnel with, with what we were doing, because we had to, we had to figure out like what our audience you know, wanted or what we could benefit our audience with and not just blast them with, with, uh, ads. And, you know, we had to grow into all these things. And so I, I just think that, you know, this is definitely a great business for, for people to pursue. And, and I, I get excited when I see, you know, fitness people wanting to get into this, um, you know, this platform because it's just going to make, you know, if you guys listen to us and you want to do a podcast, it just makes our voice stronger because there's more of us. It does, and it, it brings more awareness to podcasting. The, yeah. The, the more there it's are... It's not that popular yet. No, it, it still blows me away that I'll tell someone, you know, that I, I host a podcast and they'll be like, what's a podcast? I mean, yeah. there's still people that... There's a, quite a few out there that say that hasn't penetrated the market nearly as much as something like YouTube has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. you know... Um, I, you know, when you we have good chemistry, that really helps mm-hmm. a lot. Like we can sit down and bullshit, and I'm sure you have a friend who you can sit down with and just it, talk. It, it does. That dude, helps a lot. If we're it if does. we're if we're completely honest with ourselves, we kind of suck at podcasting. We're not very good at podcasting. Like I I I don't think. Well, we're, I mean, it depends what you define. Well, how you define it. I know. I know you're Mister Optimistic all the time, and on the opposite when it comes to that stuff. I think that Ju- Justin probably hit it on the head the best out of all three of us we really did define our why and there is a mission behind mind pump which d- is what gives it a lot of power because there we knew that there was a lot of people who would relate to us when they when they learned this information just like when we learned this information it was such a like oh my god like that's not what that's not what everyone's saying that's not, that's not that's not in the magazines that's not what this celebrity is saying you mean to tell me that's bullshit like you know, there's there's not a lot of people that actually knew that. And we knew that when we created this movement, that as people started to find out about it, that it, we would gain momentum. So having that why is, to me, so, so important. And then building a community of people around you. Because then we, we can get away with not being the best podcasters. I mean, how many times do I make up a word and fuck up? Or how many times, <laughs> you know, have we had to go back and say like, oh, we said this, but this is now true. Or, you know, or how many times have we gone back and listened to an episode we didn't thought, oh my God, that sounded so terrible. We are not by far not the best you know, podcast. Yeah. I mean, oh, remember, I talked a little bit for that one. How, yeah. Right. How horrible were our interviews for the first year? I mean, there's oh, so horrible. much I can go yeah. and pick us apart. They were like horrible. But, you know, like, it, like it's l- gross. Like Justin said, too, um, it, the future of business uh, is going to be how much free shit you can give away. So build your audience before you ever decide yeah. to monetize and give as much information and knowledge and whatever 
uh, away as, as much as possible because you know we, we we were told this a while ago by someone we respect very highly and it's only it's moving in this direction and that is whatever can be free will be free so think about that yeah if, if you become a provider of information and content you've got value if you're selling it you're you got you're gonna have to figure out how to kind of switch that or pivot at some point because at some point it's all everything's gonna be free. Well, it's that so was, decentralized. That, that was Tom Billion. and something else he said that I hundred percent agree with too was I remember we asked a question. I asked him. One of us asked him that. Um, you know, what do you think is the biggest mistake that people make trying to build a business like this? And he says for sure trying to monetize too soon. And, you know, that's everybody. They all of a sudden get a few followers and they think that oh yeah now I can I can I've yeah, got let's this. Turn the ads on. Yeah, let's start making some money right now and. It's not what it seems. I'll tell you what, and, and it's it's way different than most people think. Like if you were to look at like our Instagram page compared to some of these people that I know that have like a million followers, it does just because you have a million followers on Instagram doesn't necessarily translate into you're making a million plus a year in business. Like it's there's many guys I know with much smaller pages. We're an example of that that make a lot more than that. And I know lots of guys that have huge pages like that and make nowhere near that kind of money. So, you know, just because a bunch of people are following you on Instagram or Facebook doesn't necessarily mean you've got a million dollar business that you're sitting on. Well, just because they follow you doesn't mean you provide a lot of value. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I mean, no, exactly. You it's could, true. We uh, There was a while ago where we paid uh, <laughs> and, and we... We were looking on Instagram. There a were Instagram pages, lady, and we paid some of them. Just hey, just put a post up saying, you know, listen to Mind Pump or whatever is a, is a form of advertising. Mm. And uh, this person had like three million followers. So yeah. you figure, wow, like three million some people are going to be like, okay, I'll yeah, check these guys out. Three million followers. We should see some mm. kind of a boost in downloads or whatever. Zero. No. We saw nothing. Yeah. It was zero. Just to, just to go. And then there's people who posted about us who have like. 15,000 followers, 30,000 followers, and we'll see like a boost. So, you- listen, if you found us through JoJo, uh, oh, make no. sure you write us. Because exactly. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we do have one yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah maybe we do. Hey, hey, JoJo followers, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, check thank it you out. For converting. Check it out. 30 Days of Coaching from Mind Pump is available for free at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you want us to answer one of your questions like we do on these episodes, this is what you do. Go to Instagram, go to Mind Pump Media, find the Q&A or Qua meme and post your question underneath. And if we like your question, we'll read it on air and we'll answer it on air. Also, we all have our own Instagram pages. They're all unique and they have different information, even different than what you'll hear on the podcast. My page is Mind Pump Sal, Adam has Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.